in that case, I'm just going to start. Um, the first thing I wanted to say um, was just, uh, I've been listening all day, and I just wanted to recap a little bit about something which seems to have emerged, which I think is really important, which I've been thinking about recently, which is to do with the relationship between uh, user experience design, or at my company we call it user-centered design, which I guess is more or less the same thing, and accessibility. And I was talking to someone on the phone recently, and I was having a little chat with them. It's sort of like a free consultation. Um, they wanted to give me a job, um, but uh, it, it just turned out um, to be me geeking out at them about accessibility. And they had an application they were working on, which is for a really good cause. And um, they had designed that from Photoshop files. Um, and the guy who led that design work, which was very good design work, they'd thought it out really thoroughly, um, was a, a self-described UX designer and not a coder. And I was helping them out by offering a few um, little uh, pointers about some of the accessibility issues in there. And it did occur to me that it's this weird thing that we have in our industry at the moment, which is it's possible for someone to say, or, it, or it's, it's seemingly legitimate for someone to say at the moment, I am a UX designer. I don't really do UX, uh, I don't really do accessibility, um, which is weird. It, it seems weird to me that they would be um, uh, disconnected like that. So anyway, I, I'm interested in hearing more on that subject. And I think uh, Henny and uh, in Mike's aphorism in uh, Billy's talk uh, mentioned it as well, and it's been mentioned a few times. And I just think that's a good thing. So my talk is about current page links, uh, which are links uh, to the page that you are on. This is a relatively simple problem, or so you might think. I don't tend to engage with complicated problems because I don't have A, the talent, B, the knowledge, or C, uh, the patience uh, or inclination. I like fixing little problems like this. I think a lot of the complex problems we experience are actually created unnecessarily. I think as um, technologists, we're interested in convolution for its own sake, uh, simply because uh, it's a good way to legitimate our, um, our, uh, our professional uh, credibility. Um, and a lot about accessibility is about simplicity. And I hope that this, this little task, which was to find a good solution to, to indicating what the current page was uh, via a, high, um, a hyperlink would be an easy one. Um, as it turns out, it's not that easy. Um, I wrote an article about it, in fact, and I came up with a few solutions, many of which I'm going to cover in this talk. Uh, and then I got a lot more solutions, a lot, uh, uh, many of them a lot better than the ones that I came up with in the comments. Uh, and I was furious because I thought I'd had it really covered and I was really smug. And then um, there was some really, really good stuff that came out. And uh, that upset me greatly, and I hate you all. But um, uh, if we work together like this and make each other feel bad until the point that we come up with something really good, then that is all for the better. Um, one thing I am very proud about with this article was that it got somewhere in the region of 44 comments. Uh, I say somewhere in the region. I counted them a minute ago. It was 44 comments. And I'm proud of the fact that I brought up a subject which is very very um, accessibility centric and yet it created a big discussion and a lot of interest which um, which I was I was really proud that I managed to um, get that conversation going um, so I've noticed in my travels around the web that there is an awful lot of information there and um, uh, you're currently looking at a very trite representation of data I've just got a bunch of zeros and ones and put them into a uh, slide for you to look at um, most of the information out there is um, garbage. Uh, it's mostly useless information or it's um, or pointless functionality. Um, but there is a lot of good stuff out there as well. And ultimately, with that huge um, surfeit of information, amongst it somehow, if we're able to traverse it in a in a decent way, I'm hoping that we'll be able to glean something from it. I like to think that the web represents some like a second enlightenment of man, where um, we can all sort of come together and somehow share our experiences and, and, and research things and find what we're looking for. 
and answer some of the really big questions. Uh, really big questions like, who am I? So sort of ontological or existential questions like that. And of course, what is the point of all of this? Um, those two questions would be very difficult things to cover um, in a short talk about accessibility, um, which I wrote two days ago. Um, and actually, my strategy um, for trying to answer these questions by using the, the glut of information that the web offers has been quite, um, uh, well, I haven't been very good at it. I mean, I've, it's basically come down to just pressing the uh, random article button on Wikipedia. And I have found some interesting stuff there about small towns uh, in, in sort of rural Germany and things like that. But, you know, it, it's not necessarily going to give me what I want. So I've settled for a much smaller question to be answered. And that question is, um, where am I? If I could just have that simple question answered, then I'd be a much happier man. And um, I'd find using the web a, uh, a much more pleasant experience, should we say. So the great thing about the web is it does offer standardized ways of, um, of knowing where you are and being able to tell at what, what location you're at amongst all of that information, all of that structured information and interconnected information. Um, and the main uh, thing which is, which is um, used for this, the main standard is the, is the URL or uniform resource locator if you're um, a purist in the URI. And this is something which uh, has a known convention for spelling out basically in a string of characters um, whereabouts in the internet or, or in the World Wide Web rather is probably a better term, we, we are at. Um, so for instance, um, if I'm looking at an article on my website, um, we've, I've got the protocol followed by the domain, so I know which domain I'm on, um, and then there's the subfolder represented by article, and then even though it's been rewritten by, uh, by um, some sort of Apache directive, the name of the page itself, and it's unique. So the two uh, words here sort of give you everything you need to know about URLs. Um, are just the first and the third, really, is um, uniform. Um, so, you know, it's sort of dependable. It's quite robust. Um, every link goes to somewhere unique uh, in a distributed global system. So that's, that's a nice, dependable way of being able to work all these things out. And it's to do with location. And the fact that um, the byword addresses used tells you everything you need to know about how it helps you know where you are. But let's imagine uh, that we are living in a sort of a futuristic, uh, technophobic dystopia, where suddenly, and for reasons I can't imagine, the URL has suddenly become unpopular and uh, unpleasant to um, certain parties. And I mean, this is totally hypothetical, of course. I mean, I don't think anyone would even begin to conceive of a reason to to start to um, to banish the URL. And I'm sure that no one will ever do it. I mean, if someone did do it, it would be the sort of people who made, you know, sort of futuristic military robots and that sort of thing that you'd expect to find in the illustrated dystopian uh, sort of grubby uh, scene um, that you're looking at in the slide. Um, but without that, how do we know you are here or where you are when you're in a certain location around the web? Um, well, uh, you have to use certain conventions, I suppose. And I'm likening, for the purposes of this talk, this uh, convention, this sort of marker, to being like in a shopping mall where you would have, um, uh, the marker would say, you are here on a map. And then because you know where you are, you know how to get to the other places. So you know how to get to such and such shop where you would buy some clothes that you don't need or go to such and such uh, bakery where you'd get some um, food between meals that you don't need to eat. So this um, you are here thing is kind of, it's the point at which you can then work out all of your different uh, trajectories, I suppose. Um, and one of the, uh, it's sort of, it's sort of like a way of um, making sure that you you can you can escape as well because actually I'm I'm someone who doesn't doesn't like shopping in malls 
So um, I'm very keen on the idea of knowing how to get out. So when I'm usually looking at one of those maps in a mall, it's, um, it's to help me escape from the, the undifferentiated and depressing consumerism that's surrounding me. And um, we kind of need to do this when we're on the web as well, I think. Um, when you uh, are trapped somewhere on the web, let's say you're a keyboard user and someone has usurped your, uh, your tab uh, key so that you can't escape um, the page that you're on to close your browser and you're stuck somewhere in the internet surrounded by trolls, accusations of being like Hitler um, and uh, uh, just interminable memes and insults and YouTube comments. So we need to provide an escape route uh, so that that keyboard user perhaps pressing shift tab can get to that address bar and change that address. Oh yeah, but we can't because there's no URLs in a futuristic dystopia. Okay, well anyway, um, so I want to talk about how we um, define where someone is um, just on within a website. Let's just break it down to that because that's, uh, that's simple enough, I think. Um, so uh, there are already conventions for this. Um, so illustrated at the moment, what you're looking at is a sort of fairly typical navigation bar, um, which reads home as the first uh, link, then about, then blog, then contact. The about link has a blue background um, to um, indicate that that's the active uh, link uh, amongst the navigation. So that corresponds with the, the page that you, uh, on which you are currently situated. And this is a long-standing convention which has been uh, used for many years. Um, sometimes incorrectly people do tabs and, and they show the, uh, the sort of forward-facing tab is the current page. Um, you can get into a mess doing that um, because uh, there can be this sort of confusion between what aesthetically looks like a tab and what is actually um, interoperably a tab, um, like the tabs which um, Leone was talking about earlier, the um, ARIA tabs. But anyway, it's just a, uh, the link which says, here you are. Um, so you know your context, and it's, it's context that's important. Uh, so to mark up a navigation block like that, you would, of course, use... Um, the nav element because um, ultimately that will uh, the baseline semantics for that will be communicated accessibility APIs. You add the role equals navigation to as um, has already been uh, recommended earlier today. Um, make sure that um, older user agents can also provide that. And the great thing about these landmarks, of course, is that you can press uh, Shift F7 or whatever the key combination is for your particular screen reader and it will bring up a dialogue um, of links in one tab uh, and headings in another and landmarks in yet another one. Um, so you can go straight to that landmark. There are also keys which um, allow you to travel between landmarks. Um, I forget which ones they are. I think R goes to the next one um, and N back one or something like that. Um, someone can correct me there in the comments. But the method we use to define the current link um, representing the current page is usually done with a simply a class. And I bore myself talking about this because I've talked about it for a long time in many different places, in many different comment streams and different uh, syndicators, uh, that the class isn't interoperable. And so it, it only communicates things visually. And I know that you know that. Um, I just wanted to sort of draw that line um, before we moved on to find out ways of communicating this properly. But it, it, as far as I'm concerned, classes are one of the biggest enemies of accessibility because they give you that notion that you are, you are creating value or you're communicating more when you're only when you are, but you're only doing it visually. So I think the class, more than anything, um, represents the difference. That, um, represents that mistake where people think that um, UX uh, is different to um, 
accessibility that, that that somehow that you deal with all of those things and you use those fancy icons and things like that and that that's an art in and of itself and that you can just do that without worrying about what's underneath um, so how do we communicate this stuff interoperably we communicate it and um, by providing text just about every instance of um, a truly interoperable piece of information comes down to text um, and by interoperability by the way I mean it can be communicated to um, different devices in different ways so um, text can be read and interpreted turned into synthesized speech or even used uh, with a refreshable braille display you can't do that with the the uh, the pixel bitmap information of images or or um, or uns unsupported or un um, uncommunicated Unicode characters or anything like that. You have to use text. Text is a very very big um, weapon and, and a powerful tool when it comes to accessibility. So to solve our you are here problem, our um, this is the current page link within our navigation schema problem we will have to use text and so we'll have to use one of the following I may have missed one or two options out here but most of the time it's either a text node which is of course exists um, inside in between the two tags which make up an element so you know that's that's very well supported actually um, if you're making a button it's probably better to just use some text inside that button. I always find it weird when people um, people have said to me, well, it's all very well using proper buttons without classes um, as control elements or action elements, whatever you want to call them inside your application. Uh, because, you know, I, I want to add some value on it, you know, all of that again. And um, so maybe I want my different buttons to be different colors to represent different things like that. And I would say, well, have you tried just using text to do that? I and mean, if you've got a save button, just have save as the text node. That's pretty accessible to everyone, really. I mean, um, it can be translated. I mean, there's, there's no real sort of uh, cognitive load there. You don't have to decipher someone's pretentious icon, um, which is supposed to represent save. I mean, how does a 14-year-old feel about a floppy disk anyway? I don't know. So there's the text node. That's a good one. Alt attribute, yes. Title attribute. Probably not. Um, area label, one of my favourites. We'll be talking about that some more. Area label by, um, that's also good. And uh, in brackets, area described by, which I'll be covering too. Um, that's a great one because um, it appends, um, as we'll discuss, the the text rather than simply replacing it. Um, so here are the techniques. Here, this is a mixture of um, techniques that I came up with in the original article. Um, and uh, some other techniques, better ones that other people came up with um, in the comments, and I've tried to distill them. So, weirdly, and I didn't expect this, I do understand where people were coming from when they said this in the comments. I think um, uh, uh, Thierry uh, suggested this, uh, for instance, is to remove that link altogether for specifically for users of assistive technology. So the idea is that this link uh, is not for them. Uh, it, it's it's a distraction or it's it, or it's redundant. Um, so just take it away, um, which is you know which is one way to go. So here's this sort of crass represent, representation of that being removed. So how does that work? Well, the reason we're doing it, and one of the reasons which was suggested for doing it, was um, was the worry that you'd you would focus that link and think to yourself, oh, that must be a different page because you've forgotten that you're on that page, um, and then you'd click it and then it would reload. Now, if we were providing some accessible uh, text, which could be um, which could be announced, which said, oh, this is the current page, and we'll discuss this, then of course that's less of a problem. But the idea is that if it's a functional link, regardless of what the text is, the idea that you could click it and then bring it. Have I gone offline? 
Yeah, as, I, as Thierry has just said in the comments, and as I had already attributed to him, he says it's it's a redundant link. Uh, so yeah, but um, the fear is that it would reload the page and you start at the top of the page again, and then you'd have to climb all the way through, which is you know that's a legitimate fear. Um, the technique to do this would be to use area hidden. Um, in the specification, area hidden should, in almost all cases, it is recommended, be paired with um, the style. So you should probably use the area hidden um, attribute selector, so just area hidden in, in the um, square braces, and uh, attach display none to that. Then you have your accessible state and your visual um, interpretation of that state tied together. In almost all cases, area hidden should be used to hide things which are also hidden visually. And that's a, that's a misunderstanding, I think, a lot of the time. Um, you can use it sometimes, and perhaps, you know, there's a case here that, you know, you could, you could use it here to simply uh, hide from a particular type of user. But that's a very dangerous path to go down, I think. And uh, I'll explain more why as we move on. What it does create is some inconsistency here. Uh, by removing that link, or the link which corresponds to the page per page, you create um, a problem whereby every time you go to a page, the navigation is essentially different. Um, and Again, by the specification, the only landmark which should contain content which ever changes, which is, which is, which is, by definition inconsistent, is the main part because that's where all of the dynamic content would go. So, uh, the the idea is that everything inside the role navigation should remain consistent, and equally everything um, inside content info. And there's good reason for that. It's because um, the behavior, the idea behind those landmarks is that they are they're tools which help you navigate that that exception uh, landmark, which is main. So there's that. Um, also, it sort of creates a bit of a blind spot if you take it away, um, because within the navigation, at least, if you arrive on the page and, and immediately open up the uh, landmarks dialog and go straight to the um, to the navigation you'll find that there's no indication of your context. So so we've lost that you're here. So if you were to imagine yourself using uh, Google Maps um, and there was a, everywhere you looked on Google Maps was a big, was a big sort of blurry patch. So the center of the map was al always blurry. It sort of, to my mind anyway, it would have that sort of effect where it's like with a shopping mall, to know how to get anywhere or to understand where you are, it has to be indicated. So, you know, that's that's one way of doing things, um, and there's a lot of supporters for that. Um, this um, now, I always say aria instead of aria. I know everyone's been saying aria today. Um, I I say aria, which is weird because I'm uh, I'm I'm a southerner and I'm a bit posh, so I tend to say ours instead of as for a lot of stuff. So I'd say bath uh, and not. Uh, bath, and uh, I, I even say Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, or perhaps that should be Indiana Jones and the Temple of Don. But um, yeah, I've noticed today that everyone says Aria, um, so I'm, I'm going to say Aria, and I'm going to say Indiana as well, because that's actually the correct way of pronouncing that. Um, so we, this time we're actually going to talk about what I originally set out to do. Um, now we've covered that sort of um, wildcard one there first. Um, which is to, if we're going to indicate where we are, then I think we should do that for everyone. So how do we go about it? So the area label, we just put the area label attribute on the link itself, and we would put something like current page or or active page or this page or something like that. And what we would get would be a list of um, navigation links which starts with home, and then on our active page, it would simply read current page, um, if that is the um, the attribute value. Then blog, then contact. Um, so it does provide at least some some information to say that there is a link here, and you are you are here. 
um, whatever that link is. Uh, you can pair it with CSS, and this is, by the way, this is um, this is the um, an important part of this for me is to is to is to have a way of doing this where you can use a selector in your CSS, which, like I was saying before, it's nice to pair state with style. Um, so if you're using area label, um, the nice thing is you can just use that area label um, attribute selector there. You don't even have to have the the value. It's just if the if the area label uh, in this context um, attribute is present, then that that marks our um, our current page. So you can base styles on that, which is nice. It ties things together. Um, the problem is that it overrides the link's original text. Now, when I first discovered um, area label and started experimenting uh, with it and did a bit of testing, I um, I think because of a voiceover bug at the time, I don't know whether that's still present. Um, on my um, iPad mini, it did append the area label text to it. And, and then I got into that mode where, you know, sometimes you use one screen reader and you think, oh, that's how it works. And then you assume all the others do the same thing. But actually that turns out to be buggy. And um, what should happen is that the area label um, overrides whatever content's in there. So if if it says about in the text node, then area label will supersede that and replace it. The idea being that the area label would contain um, text which is clarifies better to um, people using assistive technology what's there than the original text. Um, there is also, and Roger Johansson brought this up in the comments uh, for that blog piece, a translation issue. Or perhaps you brought it up, up on Twitter, it's not really important. But there is also a translation issue, if you think about it, which is that that current page string is in the area label attribute, which is in the code. So it's not part of the text of the page. So when you translate the page, that's not going to be translated. I mean, it's not like you get the French translation of, uh, of a, a block quote. Uh, whatever that would be, or, or you know, the, the code isn't translated, and and I suspect that unless you use some uh, clever JavaScript, and you know, you want to avoid using JavaScript for this kind of thing as much as possible, um, you would have a problem there where it would it would say current page regardless of the the native language of the page after it's been translated. Um, just a note on testing: there's a brief interlude here. I do mostly test with NVDA um, and Firefox because I find that to be the, um, the most dependable uh, sort of combination. Um, I then go on to test with um, uh, JAWS, and um, illustrated here is a picture of a JAW, which I test with a lot. This is, um, this is the JAW of a small, I think, blue shark or possibly Mako. I thought this would be a good visual gag for this talk uh, that I did at the last minute. Um, I actually cut myself. Whilst I um, when I brought that um, jaw out to play with, uh, it's still not as bad as, as testing with jaws, the actual screen reader, but uh, it did draw blood. But yeah, always test in jaws. Um, so here's the third method. This is um, the aria, sorry, aria described by uh, method. Um, so um, illustrated at the top there is the CSS selector. So again, we can we can tie. Um, the accessibility of uh, the added accessibility of that thing to the style which would have otherwise been attached to a class so we don't have to manage a class and this state or the property uh, separately um, and then of course you'd have a, um, a DOM node on the page which contained that uh, that text um, current page and you would associate those two things together via the ID the good thing about this is that area described by does in fact append the text to the link, um, which is really nice. So you get home, about, and then there's a short pause um, quite neatly, I think, in, in most uh, screen readers that I've tested with. Uh, so you get about, current page, and then blog, and then contact. Um, so it appends the text. Nothing is omitted. You get all of that information there. So that's good, um, and as I explained, you can you can still use that attribute selector in your CSS. 
Um, the div in the page can be translated, so that's that's really good uh, because it's actually on the page, whether or not it's actually hidden. Um, and I believe even if you hide um, the text node, um, it's uh, it's okay. Um, you know, it will just still turn up. So I think that's all right. But um, so there you go. There's that problem. Uh, but does it scan correctly? I'm not sure. Um, you have home about current page. That sounds sort of like it's a. It could be a link to somewhere within the page, which then tells you about that page, rather than telling you that you're on the about page. If you see what I mean. So I don't know. Perhaps the the wording could be changed there. Perhaps current page isn't the right, right thing. But you've got to be careful, of course, with that. Uh, and of course, there's extra markup in the page. I think that's a bit of a sort of first world problem. Um, a lot of developers who are a bit uh, finicky about that sort of thing might not like the idea that with the navigation ships this other div, which would have to sit somewhere on the page. Um, and where would you put it? And uh, it's messy, and I don't like it. So you'd have to have that argument, basically. Um, you know. The, the classic argument: the um, this isn't this isn't performant, or this isn't neat, or this isn't you know dev readable versus, but it's accessible. Um, so here's the fourth technique. Um, still not quite there. I think a lot of those have some some issues. I'm sure Thierry will tell you all about them. Um, and uh, the inert element is the uh, is is one way to go. So you can use um, Replace the link which is there with a strong element. The idea being that you could you could add tab index zero so that it's part of the natural tab order, and you could focus it and read that text. But crucially, um, although it says you are here, um, or well, does it? I mean, it sort of says you are here by being what was a link but isn't a link. Um, does that work? I don't know. Um, it is focusable, but it's a non-interactive element that you're focusing, and as a rule, it's probably a bad idea. You know, it, it's probably something that wants to be avoided, generally speaking. Um, and again, it's the consistency um, issue. You kind of really want your um, navigation uh, landmark to to be kind of consistent across pages. You don't really want to, I think a lot of users probably wouldn't want to see a lot of change in there or a lot of manipulation of, of what's going on in there. Um, you've got a list of items inside a navigation landmark. You expect them to be links in each one of those items. Um, so that's going to be a bit weird uh, and be a weird experience for some people. There's quite a lot of editing there as well because you've got to replace the link entirely. Um, and yeah, I mean, when this was suggested to me, someone said strong, um, because they believed it was the most semantic way of doing things. But to be honest, I don't know what semantic strong really offers. So here's my rule of thumb: if it's not semantic, uh, it's not semantic unless it actually says something. Uh, what I mean by that is, you can fuss a lot about how semantic things are and how appropriate those elements are, but if they don't actually communicate something. Uh, in an accessible, interoperable fashion, then you're not really dealing in semantics um, anymore. Um, same problem when people talk about the semantics of classes, like is this a semantically named class? That's not really what we mean by semantics when we talk about the web. We're talking about what a browser understands and therefore can communicate via its accessibility API to users of all varieties. So that's the rule of thumb. Uh, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a priority of constituencies um, offered by the W3C for a reason, um, which is that you should consider um, users uh, first, then authors um, are next important, then implementers are next important after that, and then finally the you know the semantic theoretical semantic purity of things. And I think the difference between a strong or a span in this case really goes into that territory of who cares. Um, so finally, um, this is probably my favourite um, 
way of, of solving this problem. This is the same page link. Uh, so with the same page link, uh, what you can do is you would harness that current link and you would point it um, to the fragment uh, which is identified here as id equals main. And I really like this uh, idea because it gives you a lot of stuff for free. Um, so the HTML um, would simply be changed so that that link which previously went to the page about simply goes to the main content within that page. Now note that um, although you're replacing the about, in each case that you replace it, whether, whether it's for about or home or context or whatever the pages are, um, you can use the same attribute selector again. So that style can be attached to href equals main, that attribute selector, which I'm quite keen on. So it uses an existing con uh, convention, which is really nice, because when you focus that um, link, it will announce the text node about, and then say same page link. And that's, that's an ancient and very well established, uh, you know, um, way of communicating that it's something that goes to somewhere on the same page. So that's really nice. We can harness that. Um, you've got the CSS and the document semantics tied together again, of course, which is good. Um, very little HTML editing because you're just changing the value of the href. It does remain a link. Now, navigation blocks don't have to just be um, landmarks which take you to other pages on the site. It's entirely conceivable that you would have a role navigation block which went to all the different pages and have another role navigation block on your page which went to different sections within the same page. Um, if you were to imagine uh, Wikipedia which has its main navigation which takes you to different places within Wikipedia across pages and then although I don't believe they actually use a role of navigation they could um, foreseeably use role navigation on the, um, the blocks of um, nested links that they uh, have at the top of their articles quite often. Um, also, it doubles as a skip link. So the reason that the main element was, uh, was um, conceived in the first place was because of this heavily subscribed behavior of wanting to get to the main content, which is why we have skip links at the top of our page to, to get us over all of the crap and uh, banner adverts and junk, which, um, which we've already waded through once and, and wouldn't like to do it again. So um, it's another way, it's doubled up that, you know, I, I'm not saying necessarily you should then therefore get rid of your skip link, but um, now if that becomes a sort of a known convention, that's the sort of thing where you can get your dialogue up, go straight to your landmark, and then you'll, you'll expect to find a link which will take you to your um, the main part of the page as well. So. Um, as part of this discussion originally, um, I was talking to Leonie about um, Aria Current, um, and she expressed some interest, and I, and I couldn't find a link, unfortunately. Um, so uh, Aria Current, I suppose, would be a standard for, for doing a lot of this stuff. And I don't know whether that would make it a lot better, but the idea at least proposed was that you could do steps as well. You could um, you could uh, you could use area current to determine the current page that you're on, but also um, the current step perhaps that you're on within a continuum of um, uh, a continuum of um, shopping cart uh, screens or um, you know like multi-page forms um, that kind of thing. And if it's anything like area um, controls, which offers some interesting additional functionality. Um, for instance, in JAWS, um, you can, uh, when you, when you uh, focus on an element which uh, has an area controls relationship with something, then um, it will offer you the, the ability to go to that element by pressing a key combination. I think it's JAWS, the JAWS key uh, plus Alt plus N or N or something like that. And I wonder whether that, that kind of very specific behavioral thing, which actually allows you to do something, actually do something special rather than just communicate the special semantics, might be 
might be interesting. Um, that's actually it on that. I, I'm sorry I haven't been answering questions. It's very difficult to do that whilst I'm talking, but I'm happy to answer several now. Um, quick thing first, housekeeping. Um, uh, Leonie mentioned the um, area examples, which I did before. They're not, um, they're not actually um, linked to from my website. Uh, if you want to go to them, there's the URL there. It's havenworks.com slash practical underscore area underscore examples, or simply search practical area examples, and that will be there. The reason I've not linked to it is because they're articles which are going to be integrated into a book, uh, which I'm just completing now. Um, 30,000 words on um, ARIA, and I can't even pronounce it. Um, that book has been uh, reviewed by um, Neville Bloody Bartos, um, aka Steve Faulkner. Um, he made sure that I wasn't talking out of my bum, so it's, it's looking in good shape. Uh, oh, last thing, thanks to everyone who bought a rock and roll or rock and amp roll t-shirt as well. Um, it's the last day today on Cotton Bureau that that t-shirt's going. All of the profits I make from that are going to the RNIB. So if you fancy a t-shirt with a sort of a hipstery uh, symbol on it involving a guitar amp, please get in there. Thanks to everyone who already bought one. I know that uh, a few of you already have, and that was really, really good of you. Okay, I am... Done. Questions? Cheers, Thierry. <laughs> um, ARIA current hasn't actually been um, specified yet. It's, um, it, it was a suggestion which um, Leonie came up with to try and solve this problem. Um, or perhaps um, someone else came up with it and then sh and then she developed the idea. Uh, thank you, Debbie. Okay, no worries, Mike. Do we do we not have time for any more questions? That's that's all good. No, Hayden, you still have about fifteen minutes. If there are any more questions for you. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Right. Oh, Thierry's got one. I can see it coming. Yeah, I think in my testing, um, yeah, I, I, I did a code pen. I might be able to find that for you now, uh, where I, I, won't, I don't have a screen reader running, though, on this laptop, I'm afraid. But, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I hid the, um, the element which was um, associated with the area described by would, would display none, and it still um, faithfully um, speaks that content, which is... I was worried about it. I was worried that that would be an issue, but actually, um, it's fine. Or at least, or at least it was in in uh, uh, JAWS and um, NVDA. A um, CSS content property, yeah, um, as in pseudo content. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. I I think it can be used as uh, it it can be a really useful tool in some cases, um, and it can be an, a real pain in the ass in other cases, um, depending on whether or not you want something like that to be announced. Um, if you don't want it to be announced, the safest thing to do is to probably put it actually in the content and wrap it in a spam which has an area hidden on it or something. But uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Jonathan. Um, I'm not sure. I I really like that idea. Um, it does still change the behaviour of of what was previously on another page a link to a page. Um, I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm, I I can't think of. I like the idea that 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 it's another way of getting to the main content, and I like how you can use a consistent um, uh, a CSS selector for it as well. I'd like to. I would like to hear any any. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I I I'd like to hear some some other. Uh, if anyone has any cons about it that they can they can conceive of, I'd like I'd love to hear them because I, I think it's pretty good. Um, any of these things, of course, are tricky because you do have to get in there and change the markup per page. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Daniel, was it you came up with it on the blog? I think it was because it wasn't me. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. All credit to Daniel on that one. Um, yeah, when he he uh, yeah Daniel um, uh, submitted that idea and I jumped on it. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was that was the that was the most sensible way of doing it, and I hadn't thought of it originally. Yeah, well that's what, what it's all about, isn't it? Is um you know that's the cool thing about being in a community of people who just give a shit about doing these things and getting them right and you get into these conversations and that's that's why I was excited about there being so many comments although a lot of those comments were mine because I'm a gobshite and I can't shut up but yeah Yeah, ask me anything, Don. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll try and rewind. Yeah, we're looking for cons. One of the questions was, would you reiterate what you thought the biggest cons would be? When swapping the current link with main, that was Jonathan. Um, we pretty much agreed that there were a few cons that we could think of. Um, there was another question. There was another question, um, probably previous to uh, before I'd actually finished. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's Steve's absolutely right. Yeah, which ATs use area current? Um, it's not. It's not been uh, specified or, or certainly not implemented yet. Yeah, that's exactly as he said. It's just an idea, you know. So um, I guess a, a possible future enhancement.
we were also talking about um, whether or not um, ARIA described by um, if it was associated with a hidden element, hidden with display none, would it still work? And in testing, it seems that mostly it does. I haven't I haven't encountered a situation where it doesn't. Uh, I'm sending the current link to Maine, uh, Thierry. Uh, Thierry asked, now I have a second thought. Um, why sending current link to Maine? Uh, we would uh, possibly have a skip link which did that, but um, I see no reason why that link would go anywhere else really. I mean, the main content of the page is paramount, um, and I think that that would be where I'd want to go if it was if it was a link which said you're here, I'd want to be in the guts of whatever here is. And so that seems like the most logical place to go. And and I think any opportunity to take people to past all of the, the detritus and garbage and adverts to that main part of the page is a, a good opportunity to take. Um, so Thierry um, doesn't like the idea of having two links which go uh, go to the main, the skip link, and also the link within the navigation. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, I, I take his point about duplication and 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 then perhaps being some redundancy. But I think with things like that, personally, I'd like there to be as many many opportunities as possible to. To, to do to um, provide an important action like that. So Jonathan's asking, what are the thoughts on using it as a hypothetical attribute for styling purposes for now, or would you prefer we style href equals hash link? Well, href equals hash link would go to unless you had a a fragment on the page with the identifier link. As its ID, um, that would go that would go nowhere, and I wonder whether that would be confusing. Because oh, sorry, you you meant hash main. Okay, sorry, Jonathan. Um, I was still going on after you clarified that. Um, well, this is yeah. So so the question is, for styling purposes, does it make sense anyway? And I. I think what's what's neat about it is that you're tying the style with the function, so it's form form that follows function. And I think there's that, that when we go wrong in doing in trying to get things accessible, it's usually where we separate form and function arbitrarily for, for no for no good reason. And um, and I think it's really important uh, to take any opportunity to to make something which has a function look. Um, look a, a, in such a way that it that it elicits an understanding that that is the function of it. So you have the highlight of the link in the navigation, and that highlight is sort of saying here, and then the main content is you know is as I said like the guts, the heart of what here is. Yeah, it's like an unofficial area current. It has a similar sort of. Uh, if I understand what you're saying there, yeah, I think it, it has a sort of similar. Well, Sorry, maybe Arya isn't necessary. I hate to do this to you, Hayden, but we're going to have to to wrap it up. Could we have a that's, that's good. Another speaker coming up, but we really, uh, I think we all really enjoyed your presentation. We're really thankful that you were able to be part of this uh, special day with us. My pleasure. Cheers, Carl. I'll let you get on. But uh, thanks, everyone. Um, it's been really cool, and uh, enjoy the rest of G A A D or GAD, as I'm calling it, because I'm an idiot. See you later.